Hey, OGL350, welcome to session B, uh, fall 21. It is October 12th at about 1 o'clock p.m. My name is Michael Fayer. I'll be your host. S semester kicks off tomorrow. I'm nervous as hell. Uh, not really, but uh, I want to say that I've got high hopes for this course and the students in this course, and I don't say that to all my courses. The reason I feel that way is because I taught it in the summer. It was okay my first time doing it. Um, it's a smaller group. I taught it in session A. It blew my mind, okay? I, I, I loved it. It was fabulous. Maybe the best course I've taught in terms of groups of students, how it resonated with everybody. So I have high hopes for it in this session. Um, and I need that because uh, for the first time in my brief six-year career at ASU, I'm teaching three class, different classes at once. Um, that's not an excuse. You're taking three different classes at once, right? Um, I'm four or five. Uh, but it is going to be a challenge for me because one of the classes, OGL 343, I've never taught before. And uh, until you get a, until an instructor gets a chance to make the course their own, they're kind of, you know, a, um, a subject of the previous instructor, whoever shell they used it from. That's enough about how the sausages are made, though. So let's talk about OGL 350. By the way, I just got these new glasses today. They were just delivered, my Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Uh, uh, I know I love them because my 21-year-old son says, Dad, the frames are way too thick and black and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yes. That's one thing I don't want to do is be cool to my 21-year-old. Uh, by the way, is a Barrett Honors student in history and philosophy who graduates in December. Uh, I don't know much about his school stuff except he's defending his thesis on in the middle of this month. Um, about me, I have... Um, I've done everything <laughs> in my brief 63 and a half years on this earth. Um, I, uh, I didn't go to college until I was 52 in 2010. Uh, I'm a single parent, raised two sons myself, 24-7, 365, since 2005. But now they're 21 and 30, both graduates of ASU, or soon to be. Um, I decided uh, I, I was in everything. I've done everything. I've got a list of <laughs> probably 35 to 40 different jobs that I've had uh, in my adult life. Uh, and I grew up as a, you know, whatever boomer. Uh, so back when the boomers grew up, we were only supposed to have one job. And that was it. And you retire. Uh, my dad got me into Miller Brewing Company when I was 18. And when you go to Miller and you live in Milwaukee... You're set for life, baby. But I wasn't, so I quit. My dad didn't talk to me for a year. Um, and I tried my hands at a few things. And just to give you some crazy idea, you can see that list there. There are uh, 45 jobs listed that I've had, okay? So I've been in a lot of organizations in a lot of different capacities. Um, so as an academic, I am an academic in... Uh, interdisciplinary studies. My concentrations were African, African American studies and human rights. I have a master's degree in interdisciplinary studies, uh, but I am a professor of practice when it comes to organizational leadership and especially diversity in organizations. Okay, um, so you name it and I've done it, whether that's law enforcement, chain of command, or I was in law enforcement. I was a sergeant from Milwaukee County. Then I came out here in Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, was working in Ten City Jail and Estrella Women's Jail. And I um, did that for a few years here. So I know chain of command. I've been an artist. I've sold my own work. Uh, you can't see it, some of that stuff on the side and around. And I have my website, this Protein Life or michaelmufasa.com. Uh, I went to Ghana, West Africa in 2007 with Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Name drop, so filthy. Except my students are getting too young to even know who that is. Oh, my grandpa knows her. Uh, I went for Ghana's 50th Independence Day. They were the um, first sub-Saharan country in Africa to uh, gain independence from colonialism. And I went as a freelance photographer. 
a lot of my images are on my website. Uh, I don't sell anything. I still have it up there like as a legacy site. I started in 2007. It's, it's, it's changed and everything. And I've been on the internet doing stuff since the 90s. Um, and um, so uh, concert photography, I've done real estate photography, I've done sports photography, I've done uh, freelance photography. I was a photographer for U2 Bono, his one.org and 360 tour. I worked with Amnesty International and their local Palooza. I worked with um, uh, Lutheran Social Services of the Southwest. I was a uh, instructor and mentor to recently resettled refugees in the Phoenix area. They were from all over the world. Um, I've been active in things like couch surfing, you know, 15 years ago. Um, I've had jobs as far as an artist, selling my work uh, all around town at different venues sold my art, um, sold my writing, uh, had a front page story for when I was back home in Wisconsin. So I've done the arts, I've done chain of command, law enforcement, very strict. I've done sales, technology sales. I've been a middleman in technology sales since 70, 97. I still do it with one client right now, 24 years later. Uh, at the height of my career in the mid aughts, mid to late aughts, I was pulling in about $5 million of revenue per year myself for my clients. I was in our company's president's clubs and senior account manager. So when it comes to sales and business, I know that end. Administration, um, organizations, they're everywhere, right? I mean, they take all kinds of forms. I've done, <laughs> I've done uh, student loan collections when my student loans are higher than anybody's. I think it's a record. Uh, but that's okay. I'll die before I pay it. I don't know. Uh, I've done it all. I'm looking through this list. But anyways, um, so OGL 350. I'm so happy to be doing this class again. I mean, let me just bring it back up here. OGL 350. Like I said, these lads are progressives. And I called Ray-Ban. I was like, dude, I got to go like this to read it. So it's weird. I think because I'm working with them, it's harder. When I'm just walking around, I got my phone or driving, I think they're going to be fine. Plus, they get dark too, you know. I've had Wayfarers for, God, seven to ten years at least. I got two pair of regular Wayfarer sunglasses. I love them. It's just a look from the 60s. And I try to get the original. These, I don't know, the originals, I think, are angled in farther. I don't know. Why am I talking about this? You guys are like, get to the point, right? Oh, my God. They're like, we got to deal with this all semester. OGL 350, here's what the notes say. So I guess we got who I am out of the way. What is this? What is this? Um, diversity in organizations. It's huge. It's big. It's, it's ever-changing, right? It's so contemporary. I just absolutely love it. Because I'm a child of the 60s. I grew up during the long, hot summers. And I saw Martin Luther King and, and, and Bobby Kennedy. I, I, I saw the moon landing thing. Not, you know, I was in person, but I was there. Civil rights riots were a real thing in Milwaukee, Detroit, the Midwest where I grew up. Um, I was a part of that. I went to Catholic grade school where we were just nothing but a bunch of little white bread kids. Okay, we know no, the word diversity was invented, all right? Um... I moved on. I saw this history. And then we had the 70s and love, free love and 60s and 70s and everything's going to be great. And then the boomers kind of screwed it up, you know, because they ended up getting property and jobs and work and they wanted to protect it from the other, right? The dreaded other. And there was the Southern strategy that happened, if you're a history buff. Um, Southern strategy, in which made minorities more or less evil. And it really kind of... Uh, divided us in we're sliced in so many ways right now i mean aren't we i mean you got black lives matter you got anti-black lives matter you got antifa you got mad guy you got you got proud boys you got uh vaxxers you got anti-vaxxers oh my god we're divided in so many ways right but you know what if that's what it takes right okay so i'll put it right out there right now i'm pro-diversity extremely pro-diversity okay I mean, I've been many places in the world. You can see my stuff from the fabric from Ghana. That's from Ghana. That's uh, Mexico. Um, there's, you know, I, I was up country Jamaica by Haiti doing freelance photography. I was um, in, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Dominican Republic up country uh, by Haiti. I was in up country Jamaica also, uh, where things uh, are different than in the resorts, right? Okay. 
So I also have something so interesting. Everything's so contemporary, meaning that when I got this class in the summer, I looked at it, I was like, oh my God, some of this stuff made me cringe. You know, there was there was links to activities that were just cringeworthy from 2010. Rent a minority. Rent a minority website. I mean, back in 2010, it was cutting edge. We were pushing the envelope, maybe. But now it's like, no, we're past this. We don't need, you know, even though it was minority built and everything like that, rent a minority is not something we need to have going on. You know, this is old stuff. Okay, even my images that we could, I, you could see on my site from Ghana. You know, for example, this one, which I did multimedia on. And um, how can I get there? Where is it? There. Jeez, Michael. That one. And then the one with the two sisters and my tree or whatever. I, I've got a bunch of them. Um, I took those in 2007. So here I'm in 2021. And I ask myself, what was I intending on my images? What was the intention of this? Was it because I wanted something exotic from dark Africa? Was I perpetuating a stereotype that wasn't wasn't fair to do? Was I prejudging? Was I even bigoted in thinking in terms of who fit where? These are questions we got to ask ourselves. We got to be willing to. My previous class, as I said, I talked it up. They were so great because, look, we had everybody. Let's just face it. We had, you know, young. Female identified, minority women, African American, Latina. We had every kind of person. We had the old white boomers, the old white guys. We had them in the class. We had every range. And yet the discussions, the papers were so genuine. They were so heartfelt. They were so curious. They were so um, important. I was so just filled with passion reading them because I want to tag off to this generation that's, you know, hopefully can fix what we screwed up and what we couldn't fix. All right. I, def I, I, I I'm 63 years old. I have friends who are 62, 64, 65, whatever. I defend the younger generation all the time. Oh, these kids these days. Blah, blah, blah. Why don't you shut up, these kids these days? First of all, when we were your age, if we had this, we'd be dead. Okay, we never would have made it. All right. Um, my high school GPA was 0.818. That's right, folks. My junior uh, year of high school, my GPA was 0.818. That's a long story, but just to say that it's never too late. Okay. Um, so where was I? Okay, so... You're going to be writing some papers that the good thing about this class that I think you should really like is so, yes, you got to, you've got to source things. You've got to cite things. You've got to do the readings. You've got to, there's a lot to choose from readings wise. There's a lot of prompts, but you get to relate to yourself and your experiences and your own opinions. And my God, that's something I always think students love to do, right? Okay. So I've got something of such interest, just telling you how, Contemporary, how fast these things rock and roll. Like ASU, we've got this DEIB initiative going on, diversity, um, inclusion, uh, belonging, and the E. I can't remember the E, but it's just, I'm under pressure right now. But so I just saw this today. I got this in my email. Okay. You can read that. Was my black co worker right? to skip our firm's recruitment event. Oh my God, talk about hitting on the money. We're talking about a organizational issue of recruitment of minorities and maybe the ethics of it as well as the, the pertinence of let's, shouldn't they be happy? They, okay. We all have stories, there's too much. It's overwhelming how many things we could pile into this class, right? But if we're really looking at something narrow here, was my black colleague right to skip our firm's recruitment event? This is so interesting. So the New York Times Magazine's ethic, ethicist columnist on where the onus of diversifying the workforce should fall. Bam, that's a money for us. I'm sent, it'll be on, the link will be with the email announcement. Also, if you don't have the New York Times, you can get it free as a student for ASU. So please. Google that or something. Come on, go get it. You're a student. You get it for free. Um, I thought it was a fascinating article that really makes you think. Because we think a lot of things at the surface. 
And it's based on, I'm not going to say knee jerk, but it's based on our own personal experiences. 63 old white guy here. My sons are biracial. We got, I got all kinds of mixture of things going on here from my past history and all this stuff to what I see in the youth today and to everybody who has their own personal experiences. Of course, if you grew up in rural Idaho compared to central Miami, Calle Ocho, or if you're in Brooklyn or, you know, there's all different experiences and we filter things and we think about them. So in terms of this, was my black colleague right to skip our firm's recruitment event? Maybe. Maybe. Is that like, are they like not being responsible? Read the article. I think it's really good on the whys and the wherefores. That's what I wanted to throw in there at you there. I'll do I'll include something. Now, I got one other thing. It's a tweet, a tweet by Emmanuel Acho, who is a former football player, I believe. And um, where do I have this? There it is. Manuel Acho, okay, because again, this stuff happens daily basis. John Gruden, you football people, LA, uh, LA, LA, Oakland, Vegas Raiders. John Gruden comes from the tr family tree of my coaching tree of Mike Holmgren from back in my days as a Packers fan. I still am, but back in the 90s, John Gruden and went through and, you know, he's beloved and all this stuff comes out. And I'm going to include this link. I don't know if you can get it, but maybe we can, uh, maybe I can help you listen to this real quick. Huh? If I keep it close to my thingamabob here, um, just so you can see. I'm John Gruden, and boy, I got a lot of them. First things first, get them the heck up out of there, man. No place in our society for language like that, for speech like that, for thoughts like that, particularly for people in positions of power, not in sports or in life. Now, for those saying it was in 2011, it was such a long time ago. Keep in mind, he was 48 years old in 2011, but more importantly, the dude said he didn't have a blade of racism in him while being racist, which means he didn't even realize what he was doing was wrong, so he hasn't worked to fix it. So those thoughts John Gruden had in 2011, if he ain't worked to fix them, he still has them now. But y'all, this is why it's imperative to have minorities as voices and faces in positions of power in society so you don't have rampant ignorance running around like this. The dude was homophobic. The dude was racially insensitive. The dude was sending topless photos of Washington cheerleaders to the president of the Washington football team. Make it make sense. And lastly, the dude ain't even a good coach right now. He's 67 and 82 <laughs> since he won the Super Bowl. That's a 45% winning percentage. He got to go, okay. period. So this is a very passionate statement by this uh, young man. Um, and it makes a lot of sense. And he talks about it in, in context of positions of power, positions of leadership, uh, organizations. Again, I've got many students that are in organizations currently, and they might be involved in HR. They might be wanting to get involved in HR. They might have some kind of involvement or want to be involved in making their organization better in terms of representation, empathy, okay? As an old white cis hetero male boomer, I cannot share the experience of maybe a trans person, maybe a, a LGBTQ plus person of, you know, color or what have you, okay? We're all different. And let me just nip one thing in the bud that we caught last class. When you say that, I don't see color. I don't see color. Okay, stop it. Okay, you do see color. We all see color. We have to see color. We should see color. The problem is we don't judge by color. The problem is we got to try not to judge by color. Make assumptions by color. Okay? What you can assume about the old white guy boomer here, or what, I, what do you think I could assume about somebody else? We see color. We indulge in the color. We appreciate the color. We, whatever, you know, I don't use the, oh, would you green, purple, blue? No. You're typically a shade of white, pink, brown, all the way down to black. It's fine. Again, I'm an African studies major, and that's like, not like me saying, hey, I have a black friend. Okay, I'll stop that, please. But uh, that's going back to our article, too. So a very a lot of sensitivities here. I hope... My goal is to not ever offend anybody, trigger anybody, whatever. If you've got any kind of question, issue, send me an email. I am open to discussion, to understanding, to
to appreciating, okay? And uh, I just really want to make that clear. So what do we have now? Let's do Easter egg number one. Did I do Easter eggs in this class? Yes, I did. Easter egg number one, let's just jump to it. Go to the... Let's talk about contact your instructor. Easter egg number one is contact your instructor. Write that down with the other two and send them to me. Email them to me. I want you to contact me if you have any questions, comments, concerns. This is not a course that I designed. I cleaned it up and believe me, I think you'd really appreciate what I did, okay? I gave you less choices, but very clear choices. I got rid of things that were set up for fun because frankly, let's we're here for business, we're not here for fun, okay? If it was appropriate, I'd leave it, all right? I tried to get it up to date, but we'll talk about things as we go. Currently, this course is worth 1,030 points, but it's still point-based. 900, it's not like, you don't have to get like 90% of 1,030. You gotta get 900 of the 1,030 for an A. 800 of the 1,030 for a B, 700 of 1,030 to pass. And what happens after that is, you know, I don't judge. If you're, I didn't go to college till I was 52. I had a GPA 0.818. You do you, whatever it means, okay? All right, so we've got it divided up in points. Intro module, just 50 points. And then we'll start gearing up and moving from there. Uh, I reserve the right to move due dates. But if I move due dates, I will push them out for you. I won't pull them in, push them out, okay? Uh, I want to work with students, but you got to work with me. You can't tell me if, when the papers do Sunday night. You don't email me Monday and say, yeah, I just I couldn't get to it because I had this or that going on. No, you tell me that on Sunday, all right? I go to bed early, by the way, too. You'll get responses from me faster than you ever got responses from anybody in... Um, in university but this this time I got three courses so I'm not sure but I do try to get a really quick turnaround uh, but communicate that's the main thing communicate with me you'd be surprised you can get away with me communicate I'm available for phone calls zoom meetings and on campus too every now and then all right um, what did I get did I get Easter egg okay late policy three days 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent that's it there's no late discussion board Responses accepted, no late quizzes uh, accepted. Um, due dates, I try to push everything to be consistent Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That does not mean that you just look at your calendar every day. I got nothing in 350. I got nothing. Oh, I got nothing. And you went, oh, I got to write a paper. I'll do that later. Please don't do that. Please, I'm begging you. Be prepared. I'll be putting out these videos on Mondays for you when the module starts. Please be ready to look at it, to indulge yourself. you got readings, you got choices to make, you got discussion boards to prepare for, papers to prepare for. Stay with it. Don't procrastinate. Okay? Conversely, working ahead might be a little dangerous, but, you know, I'm not going to stop it. You could do it. I'm not going to grade it until I get there. Okay? Um, there is a dress code. No, not. Huh. All right. Uh, emails. Oh, when you email me anything, Easter eggs, questions, whatever, Put the subject in the subject line, OGL350, or email me right from Canvas. If you do, it'll automatically be in there. But OGL350, put it in the paper, put it in the email somewhere, OGL350. OGL, that's all I need. I don't need your social security number, your ID number, your, your birth date, your, I don't need any of that stuff. I just need OGL350, okay? That's all I need. Uh, for Easter eggs, just write them down. One, two, three, that's it. If you want to write me a special thing after that, say, you know, you are insane, dude. You should seek special help. Then write that on the bottom. Don't write, thank you, Professor Fair, because the first Easter egg, I liked it. It was blah, blah, blah. Then after that, I would listen for a while on the second Easter egg. It's not a narrative. Just write them down, okay? Uh, and, uh, does that mean? I'm sorry. Uh, all right. So, yeah, you can call me Professor Professor Fair. Don't call me Mike or Michael. Not yet. Um, to call me Mike, you must have known me before turn of the century east of the Mississippi. And Michael is west of the Mississippi and uh, post in 21st century. Uh, after that, you can just say Professor Fair, Mr. Fair, Instructor Fair. It gets kind of weird after that, kind of Harry Potterish Hogwarts, right? Uh, all right. So let's do... Um, Okay, the, all, the, all the modules are pretty much the same. Like I said, check them out. Uh, there's an instructor video, there's a discussion board, there's an audio-visual visual quiz, and there's a paper. You know, there's things to do between that, but that's how they stagger. Discussion board, quiz, paper, and then the video on Monday, okay? Um, keep in mind, in Module 6, there is a cultural enrichment paper. 
I introduce you to that in my intro module or module one, and you need to make sure you think about this during the session because you need to participate in some kind of cultural enrichment event or something. You'll see what it is in the instructions, but know it, do it now. I mean, do it, you have to do it during the session. It can't be like, oh, I went to Ghana in 2007. Let me tell you all about it. No, that doesn't work, okay? So take a look at that. Um, Easter egg number two. Diversity in organizations is a good thing. That's pretty much basic, right? That's a meme that's basic, okay? Because again, just because we're old white guys that run everything doesn't mean we should say, oh, I treat everybody the same. No, you don't, okay? Nobody treats everybody the same. Let's just get over that, okay? But we can endeavor to do so, to have uh, uh, equality, and how we're treated, and how we're being paid. Empathy, understanding, sympathy, what have you. Understanding, communication, all right? Viva la différence, okay? And, uh, all right, let's see. Okay, during the readings, discussion boards, and papers, you're going to have choices. That should be a good thing. Again, I tried to make the choice clear to understand Choose something that resonates with you. I try to, I try to, it's what I inherited, so some of the readings might be older, but if you have any con questions, comments, concerns, if you want to submit something to me, great. Uh, these videos will be like this, just under a half hour probably. Um, what else can I say? I think, uh, like I said, I'm really looking forward to it because I got an uh, Interdisciplinary Studies 302 class, which I built myself. I know it like the back of my hand, like that tattoo, but... So I'm pretty much can know what's going on there. I'm not really worried too much. On the other side, I got OGL 343, social process and organizations. I'm excited about it, but it's the first time teaching it. I just got the text yesterday. Uh, so there's apprehension, there's a little anxiety. And then right here in the sweet spot is OGL 350, diversity in organizations. Something that I'm very passionate about, I'm very experienced in, and something that I've actually taught now a few times. So Really looking forward to working with y'all. Uh, remember working with you, okay? Um, send me your two cents worth and your Easter eggs. Easter egg number three then. Uh, for those of you ASU people, you know, forks up. Forks up. Peace.